Hello, Future Tribe. On this week's episode, I am joined by Jared Farncomb, um, a YouTuber. Oh, how would you describe yourself, Jared? Yeah, I guess tech YouTuber is what everyone tends to refer to me as. Yeah, so yeah. Go with that. Well and truly tech YouTuber, you released your first video about five years ago, and now you're up to what two hundred fourteen thousand subscribers um, on your channel. So that's that's pretty solid. And you've got a second channel as well that you started recently. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Been going for five years, and uh, yeah, I just started a second channel a couple of months ago, just to kind of experiment with uh, some new kinds of content. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what's the second channel called? Uh, it's just Jared's laptops. So similar to the main channel, which is Jared's tech. So yeah, yeah, not, awesome. not that Not that imaginative. <laughs> but it's but it's pretty cool. You're sort of creating this. Uh, actually, hold on. You you are aware of Linus Tech Tips, right? Yeah, of course. Is it is it inspired by you know first name and then last name as sort of the category sort of approach, or was uh, it just something that you came up with independent of that? Yeah, so I, I mean, I definitely did spend a while thinking about how I wanted to do it, whether I just wanted to go like random catchy name or actually put part of my name behind it. And yeah, I did see some other channels like that, and I thought, you know, that sounds pretty good. I'll put my name in it, and you know stand behind the thing rather than just be some random name that means whatever like I, that's just that's just what i chose could have yeah. gone either way though yeah i mean but it's i think you know over the last few years it's it's um probably been a pretty wise decision i know i know you didn't put a lot of thought behind it but i think the way things are transpiring now um there's a lot of um a lot of i guess power behind sort of being an independent youtuber or an independent personality especially when you know people can just get paid to do stuff so i think having your name there yes it's only your first name but um that adds a bit of um credibility to you that you're sort of putting your name out there and saying you know when i when i give you my thoughts um it it is me it's not just this faceless entity that can take money from you know questionable sources to say certain things yeah exactly so Essentially, it becomes the brand, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, as an individual as well. Now, when did you start? So you started YouTube five years ago. Um, was that like a full-time thing or were you experimenting back then? Uh, yeah, so basically the, the way it started is kind of interesting. I was just lying in bed one night and I couldn't sleep and it was like three in the morning. I'd been there for hours and I was just thinking like, wouldn't it be fun to like create some videos or something? Because I've been watching a lot of other channels out there and I thought, you know, I could do that. That's that that doesn't seem that hard. I mean, it was a bit harder than I thought at the time, but that's a different story. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I pretty much got out of bed that night and just made the channel. And uh, I think I made the the first video a few days after that. It was just like a basic uh, tutorial for how to do something in Linux, which you know the channel isn't really about. But yeah, that's that's how it got started. Just five years ago couldn't sleep literally to the point where I just had to get up and do something. And, uh, yeah, at the, at that that time though, it was just, uh, I tried to do one video a week for the first, probably the first two, three years. It was maybe one a week. There were a few breaks in there in between where I just wouldn't do anything for a few months, but, uh, yeah, it was definitely part-time at least in the beginning, Mm -hmm. um, moved into full-time, uh, it was March, 2019, I believe. So I've been doing that for a bit over a year now. Right. Wow. So how old were you when you, so five years ago, how old were you when you started? Uh, yeah, I would have, yeah, I would have been uh, 25 back then because mm-hmm. I'm 30 today. 30 today. Okay. And so you started that, were you working in a similar field, like in a techie field at, at the time or? Yeah. So I've always worked in tech to some degree. So five years ago, I think when, where I was working then, I think I was still working in uh, uh, as a sysadmin, so systems administrator, so like managing servers and computers, that type of thing. And then shortly after that, I started to move to uh, penetration testing. So like essentially hacking websites and, mm-hmm. you know, security, that type of stuff, which was pretty fun. But yeah, just doing the videos on the sides, I found, I just found more interest in that over time. Yeah. So you're a, you're a Canberra boy or, or where, where are you, were you, I mean, you're in Canberra now, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'm originally from Darwin, but I've, I've lived here since 2003. I th- okay. think I moved here just, just after the, the bushfires. So mm-hmm. that's how long I've been mm-hmm. here. So basically Canberra boy. Yeah, basically yeah. more yeah. than half my life. Awesome. And then going through school, did you study 
sort of tech IT, um, or was that was that just something that you fell into post school? Yeah, I tried to do pretty much as many IT classes as I could. So I'd, I'd pick pretty much whatever I could, just, you know, max out that limit and everything else just nowhere near as interested in. So yeah, definitely tried to do a focus on that, even though a lot of the, the classes back then weren't particularly that interesting mm -hmm. or, you know, like some of them were just really boring things like, you know, learn Microsoft Excel and word processing <laughs> and that type of thing that I found out more interesting than like uh, English and yeah you know, that type of stuff yeah yeah I, I still remember we used to work on Excel and you know we had to come up with um a way of like generating drawers using Excel and it was it was cool but you know it's 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 quite different now like I use Excel day in day out but nowhere near to that capacity because there's just dedicated software to do that and dedicated ways to mm. do that so uh, I think I mean naturally IT shifts a lot but I think in the last sort of 10 15 years it's shifted even more than more than we would have expected especially with sort of the rise of rise of SaaS and then um more more sort of uh tech tech adjacent stuff or IT adjacent stuff like you do on YouTube now you were talking about doing sort of penetration testing. Um, I'm sure at the time you were sort of seeing the rise of the importance of cybersecurity and um, mm. there would have been, you know, a lot of a lot of potential there for you, whether it's, you know, not, not that everything's about money, but there would have been potential to make a, you know, solid amount of money if you were able actually at a relatively young age to build out more expertise and then move out and start consulting. Did that ever yep. sort of come up or did you do that for a little while while running the YouTube channel? Yeah, so I definitely considered that. So there is for sure a lot of money in the security field, as you say, uh, it's definitely expanding. Uh, the place where I worked, it was rapidly growing, still growing at the moment from what I've heard from uh, some old colleagues. So yeah, definitely a lot of money to be made there. But I guess what happened for me was uh, eventually the uh the income i was making on the side from youtube kind of you know became on par with what i was earning there and i wasn't i didn't really have a good uh work-life balance at that time so you know i'd be staying up to like 2 3 4 a.m then waking up going to work get home pretty much work on videos just you know it wasn't really sustainable mm -hmm. so once the kind of i was kind of getting the same amount of money from both sides um or was my partner she talked me into she basically said, you know, you should, you should leave your job and just do the one that you, you really want to. And yeah, I really wanted to do the videos. It was just personally more interesting. I mean, I really do like security is interesting, but yeah, the, just making the videos, I think that was the path I wanted to follow and, you know, I've been doing it for a year, mm -hmm. no regrets at all. It's, it's been great. So yeah. Yeah. Can we touch on that income side of things now? I know you, I'm not sure if YouTube doesn't like uh, YouTubers sharing their sort of numbers or whether YouTubers just don't like sharing their own numbers. And I'm not going to necessarily ask you to, you know, roll out your tax return, but give us an idea of like, I mean, how would you make money off YouTube for the people who don't really, uh, don't really get that? I know there are different facets, but how, how did you sort of start to monetize that, that field? Hopefully I can explain it because uh, I still have difficulty explaining it to my parents. <laughs> I think they don't really understand what I do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's probably um, about half of the, the uh, income comes from YouTube ads. So basically someone watches your video and they're served an ad and you make money based on that ad. So with the, the tech audience, I think the amount of money that you generally make is lower compared to other fields because a lot of people are, you know, tech savvy and they use tools like Adblock. So that kind of does hurt a bit compared to, you know, if I was doing something a bit more mainstream. But uh, yeah, so it's mostly based on uh, ad views. There is a little bit with uh, YouTube Premium because YouTube, uh, they sell, you know, like a service where you pay uh, monthly and you don't get ads. So I think people that do that uh, the creators that they watch end up getting a bigger cut compared to what you would get by ads. So that's that's a part of it as well. But outside of YouTube, uh, the other 50% or so is probably uh, just Amazon affiliate programs. So basically if I'm you know looking at a, a product and you know I wanna show people where they can buy that or see further reviews for instance, and I link to that on Amazon, if someone buys it there, 
then you get a small um, a cut out of that. It's only it depends on the category, but it's usually like a couple of percent or something. So yeah, it really it varies based on what the item is and yeah. Oh, that factors. adds up obviously uh, as as more people buy obviously that just keeps stacking and and i guess it's just like youtube um or, or people watching youtube and the money off youtube ads it the the beauty there is that you can scale it up and it won't necessarily take up more of your time to scale that up um because um once you start getting more views like it doesn't cost you time for you know two hundred thousand views versus a million views and i guess that's where um you've got to put in the work at the front end and then off the back end you can start to sort of as your catalog builds up you can start to generate more and more views um, and hopefully more and more income yeah exactly so a lot of the stuff oh like a lot of the videos i create a lot of them are i guess slow burners in a sense so you put one up initially the views might not do too great but you know over two years that really does add up and if you're putting out multiple a week over the course of a few years yeah it does add up Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I want to I want to get down into the the numbers a bit more, um, and I don't want to sort of push your comfort level, so I'm happy with sort of ranges. But um, now to say you're you're doing this full time, are we are we talking you know either side of 100k a year sort of income levels? Or are we talking lower, higher? Just to give an idea of um, YouTube as a as a full time thing, what's the potential there? Yeah, um, definitely above 100 is possible. That's for sure. Yeah, okay. Um, and that's just so, so I guess you're doing it by yourself at the moment. There's no, no other team behind you. Yeah, at the moment. But, at, well, I've got so much stuff here that it's, I'm kind of the, the main bottleneck in mm. getting things out faster. So, yeah, as, a, as something that I would need to do in order to start growing at this point, I think might be to look into hiring possibly some kind of assistant, yeah. something like that, because yeah, my time becomes the main limitation. Once I get sent all these different products, I just can only do so much in a day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to scale up, you then need to be more than just Jared sort of working on the videos. Yeah, um, that's right. So is it is it a bit of a matter of, I guess, saving up to take that gamble um, to then sort of take that next step up um, to, to hiring someone do you think or what's what's sort of what's that tipping point for you yeah that's a it's a tough one so i definitely i think the tipping point has already been hit in terms of how much time i spend but i just haven't really looked into how much it would cost on the i suppose financial side or where the work would be done for instance because at the moment i just do all the work at, at my house mm -hmm. like am i going to have someone come over to my place or am i going to have to go and get office space and you know what's the co cost associated with that um how far is it gonna have to be where like i'll have to do daily travel so there's just all these different factors that i haven't really looked too much into yet are you thinking about it as a as a business long term or are you still sort of not in a negative way but so, sort of thinking of it as a as a fun thing that you're doing that that earns an income as well which what what sort of mindset are you set in at the moment yeah i think at the moment it's more you know passion slash hobby that just happens to you know pay the bills but mm -hmm. at the same time i i do also like the idea of expanding and making it become more of a business but at the same time I think I would just have to be careful how that works because I've seen other channels do that. And what happens is, uh, you know, they offload the work to other people. And then you, you just kind of feel that the, uh, I guess, what the audience was originally there for changes over time and it becomes something else. You know, that might be good, might be bad. So it just depends on how you go about it, I think. Yeah. And I think some channels do it better than others. I'm, I'm um, I've got YouTube premium. I'm an avid youtube watcher always you know um about two years ago invested into equipment that i told myself i'm gonna you know then use to shoot youtube videos never got around to it because my um job of sort of running the business and um all that just takes up too much time um mm -hmm. but looking at the different youtubers out there i mean you know say unbox therapy and then there's austin evans and then there's linus tech tips um these are all and say mkbhd as well sort of throwing them in there i think i've sort of named the the big four um out there um and i and i definitely get that point of like i think unbox therapy for example sometimes does a lot of videos that 
I just, just, I mean, just in my opinion, it's just a videos for the sake of videos, um, similar to sort of Austin Evans, where I think, I mean, Linus Tech Tips, they've, he's obviously really scaled it up, started by himself. And I think one other person and scaled it up. So um, I guess you've got a few blueprints to, to follow or, or at least to look at and then sort of mimic. Um, is that something that, you, that you're doing? And I guess as a broader question there as well, how much do you keep an eye on other YouTube channels and sort of what YouTube's doing um, when you're deciding on videos? Yeah, so I definitely watch a lot of other YouTube channels, like possibly too much. Um, like I'm subscribed to a lot of channels. I watch a lot of videos. I comment a lot on them. And then people are always like, oh my God, you, you're everywhere. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> so, so maybe I should... I, I notice uh, you everywhere. When I, every, every time. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm a subscriber of yours um, and you watch your videos before I make buying decisions. Um, and But yeah, you, you're on, you're commenting on every, which is, I mean, it's a smart marketing strategy as far as I'm concerned. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily the number one reason you do it for but you know i think that's a very smart approach um but sorry i cut you off oh no no, no worries um honestly i think it's just fun to engage in the community like a lot of the posts are mostly just you know i see something funny in the video and make a joke about it that kind of thing <laughs> that's just a bit of fun um yeah uh so with those other channels that i watch i think linus in particular has probably done one of the better jobs in terms of uh I suppose not really changing over time. I mean, their channel does a video a day, so sometimes obviously, two, right? Yeah, sometimes. So That's obviously, crazy. like they they have teams of people, you know, testing out all these things and writing the scripts and doing the editing and all that. I think it's at the point where you know Linus probably just steps in front of the camera, you know, records his bit and then moves on to the next thing. So I don't know if I would want to turn into that level of i guess you know just video creation machine mm -hmm. i'd still want to be doing a lot of the actual stuff myself because yeah i just find that part of it interesting although i do like all of it so you know video editing uh using the camera that type of thing so i think i would always have to be involved just in the different parts to some degree just because i like doing it yeah i think you're you're it's pretty evident to me that you're doing it for the fun of it um and you know it's not that linus for example from linus tech tips isn't doing it for the fun of it but um i think he's crossed crossed that threshold into like business owner and then doing it as part of a a business uh purpose i, I mean i imagine his schedule being basically like go you know feature in this video then go to this other set feature in that video like they've got three to five sets they've got three different youtube channels so um for for those of you who aren't youtubers linus tech tips is probably one of the bigger uh, i mean I think they've hit 10 million subscribers um, on their channel. Yeah. Uh, from what I can tell, 15 to 20 staff at least. Um, like proper, I think they've got probably two people working on just collaborations with other brands and how they, you know, sort of managing that. And they do um, different festivals and, and things like that as well, or, or, or well, conference or whatever you call it, the expo. Um, yep. Now that's obviously across, like they've, they've crossed so many boundaries, like they have their own merch, things like that as well. Um, how do you make decisions around sort of the YouTube channel and growing past just YouTube videos for yourself, like merchandise, um, doing sort of, I mean, at the, at the moment you can't do off screen, like in-person events because of coronavirus, but have you thought about those things and, and sort of looked at those things as in the future, like sort of opportunities or how, how do you look at that? Yeah, I've been thinking about uh, like what I could do to, you know, expand things in the future like that, I guess more on the business type of side. Um, you know, I guess most people just resort to merch and I, I, nothing against that. Like maybe I'll do something like that in the future, but at the same time, I kind of like the idea of, I suppose, a more tangible and useful product. I'm just not really sure, uh, what I would be able to do for that. I mean, I mostly review laptops, so you might think, oh, maybe you should like team up with some company and sell some kind of laptop that's, you know, like got all the stuff you like and that you can actually stand behind and recommend. And, you know, I think that well, it has its own positives and negatives. Mm -hmm. uh, things like, you know, it's hard to, it would be hard to review other laptops and then, you know, come in and be like, oh, I've got this other thing that you can buy that's better. So <laughs> I think there's going to be a fine line between that if I did go down that route. But uh, yeah, otherwise, just being 
I've, tr I've been trying to have a think about what I could do that would actually offer value rather than just, you know, say, slap a logo on a shirt, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I haven't really come up with anything yet, but it's definitely something that I am thinking about. Yeah, I mean, um, it's it could turn into sort of the uh, unbox therapy and later case sort of debacle, <laughs> couldn't it, in, in terms of w picking what you've got to do next and what you do next. I mean, I can't believe that they... I genuinely can't believe that that whole thing happened. So you've got to be be wise about it because I think um, YouTube especially um, can be quite a fickle sort of uh, space um, at, at the best of times. Um, so no, to totally understand that. Now let's talk about um, the videos that you put out. So you review laptops. Um, is that, that that's about all that you do at the moment? Is, is that right? So it's the it's the main thing that I focus on. It's probably what started getting um, the traction mm -hmm. five years ago. Uh, but I do other things as well, like just more general tech stuff, like desktop PCs, uh, graphics card, CPU comparisons, that type of thing. That's mostly because those are things that I'm personally interested in. So when I watch other tech channels, I do watch other lap cha laptop channels, but um, mostly I probably myself am more interested in the desktop side. So I try to do, I try to make some videos, you know, just based on that because I'm interested in it. And those videos don't perform as well typically as the laptop content because I suppose that's what the audience is there for. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think you've got to do like something for yourself rather than just only making the stuff that people are there for. Yeah, and then there's probably an element of, I think, laptop sales would greatly outstrip desktop sales, especially in the consumer market. Um, just, and that's not looking at any stats, so I might be completely wrong, but that would sort of be what I what I expect the numbers to look like. So um, I think it would make sense that more people would watch laptop videos as well. Talking about these people, um, you're based in Canberra. Most people don't know where Canberra is, don't even know how to pronounce Canberra. Um, and then yep. as, a, as a bigger picture, we're based in, you're based in Australia. So say 20, 25 million people. Where do you, where do you find most of your uh, viewers coming from? Um, is it the US? Is that no, no surprise there or? Yeah, so Australia makes up like three to four percent of my views so it wow. is actually on the lower side mm -hmm. it's um it's quite low i was not expecting which, that yeah it's always interesting because um a lot of companies don't have a presence in australia so mm -hmm. you know i might have to reach out to like a team in the us or somewhere else and they'll just say oh sorry you're not in our region so we can't help you and they just leave it at that and it's like or they just think you know you're in Australia, so you're only you've only got Australian viewers. Mm -hmm. and it's like, well, that's not the case. It's a global audience. Yeah, but, um, yeah. US US is definitely number one. What sort of, if you don't mind me asking, what sort of viewer numbers do you get across all your videos in a in a given month? Uh, so for the last couple of months, I think I was doing four million per month, but mm -hmm. it has gone down a little bit. I think there was a uh, a rise with a lot of channels over the last few months as a lot of people have been you know, stuck at home. So I think a lot more people have been watching YouTube, but I think some countries might be returning to normal, not really sure, but mm -hmm. yeah, the, the views have started going down recently. But yeah, the last few months, um, it was definitely a bit of a spike. So it sort of spiked up with COVID becoming a more serious thing, would you say? Is that, is that fairly following? Yeah, that, yeah, I think that's, that's fair to say because in previous years, um, I don't think there's been that much of a boost early on in the year. Normally, a lot of the viewership happens later in the year because there's a lot of sales in the US. Like mm -hmm. there's, uh, I think, Black Friday in November, then Christmas and, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. And then in sort of January time frame, there's a lot less going on. So a lot fewer people are actually looking to buy products. So, mm -hmm. you know, reviews are less interesting, I suppose. Yeah. So what's like a, what, what were your December view, views like, like closer to 3 million or, uh, or not that, not, you know, 75% of, of the formula? Like, are, are we talking a huge variance there? Uh, I, can't, I can't recall off the top of my head. I, I want to say somewhere around maybe 2 million, like it was on its okay, way up and then, right. and then, yeah, so it was going up. It was definitely trending up. And mm -hmm. then normally early 2020, you know, probably would have started going down a bit and then, a uh, few months in, the opposite happened and it started going up. 
Mm -hmm. so i can't mm -hmm. complain too much about that <laughs> yeah definitely i mean youtube i think is one of those spaces that have um really done well going through coronavirus um I i've seen like you said the number of videos being pushed out um in some cases for to the de detriment of quality but in a lot of cases n not not the case um so youtube sort of has survived now talking about youtube um, as as a YouTuber sort of publishing videos, how what, do you have any tips for people who either want to get started on YouTube or um, create a presence on YouTube? What, what, what would you say? I mean, your early days, was it really just about putting out quality content and then just slowly building that up? Or were there big um, things that you did that created positive trends or things that you did that created sort of negative trends? Yeah, so I've never had any videos like go viral or anything like that. It's always just been constant, steady growth. And I think the key to that um, over the long term is really just to stick with it and be consistent. And with YouTube in particular, I think they really prefer you to sort of niche down. So like find an area that you know a lot about and make videos on that. So for example, if I just only went into laptops i could probably make the channel do better but as i mentioned before you know i like doing all these different types of things but yeah if you just focus on one area uh i think youtube will know they'll know you as you know the person for for that particular sort of content so when someone's searching that they'll be more likely to surface your videos to them and it will understand that the audience is after that type of thing and then it'll find other people who are also interested in that type of thing that might watch similar channels and then start promoting the videos out to them. So I think getting started to begin with, I'd recommend just being consistent, picking something you're interested in and that other people are interested in. So you definitely be, you want to make stuff that people will get value from. And uh, yeah, those are probably the main things. How did you find your video style? Because I would say that you do have a very distinct approach to, to your videos, at least. Um, most of the ones that I've seen have, have you like to do sort of a, a voiceover, nice shots, stats on the screen, things like that. Um, how did you find that? Oh, was it a lot of research or was it sort of pumping out content and again, sort of uh, just, you know, doing more, uh, ended up with more, more good work for lack of a better word? Yeah. So I think in the early days, back when I started, I wasn't as keen um, being on camera. I mean, that's changed now, you get used to it. But at the same time, that's, I guess, what I've become used to doing. So a lot of my videos will be just voiceover and then I'll film some nice shots to put over the top of that. And my view of it personally is that, you know, if I want to find information on a product, I want to, I want to look at that product and I want to see things about it. So why should 90% of the video be my face telling you about it when I can just show you what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think I've found myself more and more, um, about two, three months ago, I bought a new laptop and what I was looking for was, were videos that showed me the product from every angle, the, this, the yeah. angles that you can't witness in in like press photos because most press photos stick to you know fairly standard just like two or three angles um and yep. and i think that's another reason why a lot of the viewers like what you do and you also get down into the nitty gritty um which i guess has two well uh, it, it's a it's a double-edged sword right because one you're not you can't necessarily get into the nitty gritty and then maintain sort of those surface level uh, mums and dads, so to speak, who watch videos. Um, but then you can't stay surface level because, I mean, I think a lot of people are surface level and then there's no necessary, there's not a lot of value that you can provide. So was it quite intentional that you were going to go in and sort of really make the videos that you want, uh, you want to see? Yeah, so exactly. You hit the nail on the head there perfectly. So that is somewhere, something that I've wanted to focus the channel on is just trying to provide as much detailed information as I can, as if, you know, I was about to go and spend thousands of my own dollars on this own thing. What would I want to know about? What do I care about? So to do that, a lot of the video does sort of, I suppose, come off as more of an information dump. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of details and a lot of data from different testing, which takes days to complete. So some, a lot of people do find that interesting, but yeah, there are definitely others that, you know, they don't, 
either don't care or they just they don't understand without learning a lot more uh, additional information that they don't have time to figure out or they're just you know they're not they're not interested in that so that that's why i started the second channel is the main idea behind that was to be more i suppose just not as in depth more sort of quick and uh, to the point i guess so there are a lot of those other bigger channels you mentioned before i think a lot of um, that type of content misses out the details that I aim to provide. Mm -hmm. So that's what the second channel is attempting to sort of um, fill. So I do all the detailed testing on the main channel. And then once I know everything there is to know about it, in theory, I can go and make the second video right. on the other channel and just, you know, kind of do more of a summarized look at it. Yeah, yeah. And so that second channel, what's been growth and traction like and your experience like when it comes to the second channel? has I, I would assume it's been much quicker in terms of growth. Uh, yeah, so I put a few videos out before I actually like publicly announced it just to kind of see what would happen. Mm -hmm. So from the start, I could have just been like, hey, new channel, come and check it out. And, you know, maybe that would have been... Uh, not cheating, I guess, would have just been taking advantage of what I've already built up. But I was mm. curious to see what would happen, you know, if I was kind of approaching this as if I was starting from scratch. And uh, a lot of people did see the the channel name and it had my name in it combined with laptops. So they kind of figured out pretty quickly that it was me. And I guess they hear my voice and maybe that's pretty unique. I, I was but, one of those uh, people. <laughs> it okay. just popped up in the recommendations. I was like, did did he, I actually thought you changed your channel name originally? Uh, um, right. So I clicked in. I was like, I mean, fair enough, because I'd watch a lot of you laptop videos. So I was like, okay, he's just niching down a bit more. Um, um, but but yeah, as it turns out, you you were just creating a second channel because I think when Short Circuit was created by Linus Media Group, um, I think I might be wrong, but they they were one of the quickest channels to get to. I think it was like five million subs without a v single video, something crazy like that, or maybe a million subscribers yeah like they, they 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 went up real fast i can't remember because a few people have done new channels lately i mm -hmm. remember one of them said something like you know we're not posting a video until we hit x amount of subscribers <laughs> so it kind of encourages the existing viewer base to move over but uh, yeah i wanted to see what would happen before that so i did eventually do that and you know obviously things had a big uptick since mm -hmm. then but yeah initially those first few videos that i did they they did pretty well because i think as mentioned before, um, YouTube is pretty good at recommending content once it knows like what sort of videos you're doing. So once I'd done two or three laptop uh, videos, you know, it's probably like, hey, this is a laptop channel. We're gonna mm -hmm. go suggest these videos to other people that have seen other laptop videos. So a lot of the videos on that channel were actually coming from uh, recommendations and suggested, whereas the uh, older main channel gets most of the views from search. So people just mm -hmm. like either typing into Google or in YouTube, you know, product XYZ review. So it was kind of a different uh, source of those views, which I found quite interesting. So that was a little fun experiment. Yeah. What does uh, Jared's laptop sit at the second channel? What, how many subscribers on there now? I think it's 14,000. Uh, not sure about the views. It's a bit up and down because a lot of people came in within like the last few weeks once I publicly announced it. Mm -hmm. And, but, and uh, yeah. have you sort of, is it fair to say that I, I'm guessing that if, if a lot of the views to that channel come from recommended and, and things like that, that um, the subscribers to views ratio is a bit more disproportionate. Is that, is that, is that sort of, um, I mean, you haven't looked at the numbers I would assume, but is that fair to say, do you know? So I haven't, really compared them but i'm more inclined to think that people are more likely to i guess subscribe or stick around once they uh, from when they come in from a recommendation or a, a featured video or something like that i think with search a lot of people are just they want to know something and they're looking for an answer to that question mm -hmm. so they watch the content and they get what they want and you know they might just they might just leave but i think once something's suggested and you know, if it's more than just, you know, product, whatever review, and it's like the approach is different rather than, you know, titling it um, like a review, you make it more, I guess, interesting and enticing, I guess, um, more like a, like a, a story, I suppose. Mm -hmm. You want them to, you know, watch the video and, you know, you're, 
rather than just saying all this information and data and stuff, you know, I, I guess I'm taking them on a journey, so to speak. Yeah. With, uh, like the experience, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's sort of like, you know, like this, you know, Dell's new laptop gets away too hot or um, HV's laptop is probably the best thin and light and you sort of click into it and you sort of go go into it, not just for the information dump, but more for what's Jared yeah. ex- Jared's experience being with that device. Yeah, is that- and I think... That's yeah, exactly. And I think going that way, I, well, I'm assuming more people would probably be more likely to, you know, think, hey, oh, this is interesting. I want to, I want to hear more about this and subscribe compared to just, you know, searching for product. Okay, I found out what I want. You know, moving on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and I guess what you're doing here is also then diversifying um, your channels through which you get well no pun intended, but diversifying your channels by creating more channels, um, <laughs> <laughs> creating more YouTube channels. I couldn't help the, the dad joke, but um, does YouTube then show you on the back end where your views are coming from, um, e- either in terms of numbers or as percentages, like you talked about recommended, you talk about Google search, YouTube search. Does it break it down for you? Yeah, it gives you a percentage of uh, like four or five different categories. And yeah, one of them search, one's recommended, I uh, can't remember what the others are, but those are the main ones. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I noticed they were basically inverted between the two channels. So it does seem that the two different approaches result in uh, that being a bit different. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I mean, YouTube is heavily algorithm driven. Um, you just look at the pure stats of, of how many YouTube videos are published and how many minutes of, minutes of videos published. And you sort of go, it has to be, you know, AI algorithm powered because there's just so many videos being pushed out there. Sort of rewinding back to um, your to the early days. Um, do you remember the first dollar of of sort of money that you made from YouTube and and when and how and what sort of place the channel was at at the time? Uh, so I don't really remember the first money from. Uh, YouTube, I remember it was probably something like I made, you know, like 20 bucks or something like that. It was probably deposited into my account. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I I remember uh, the first Amazon check I got because with Amazon, they have a a threshold that you have to hit before you actually get paid. I don't think that's the case with YouTube. So if, you know, you have like five bucks, they'll just deposit it. Mm -hmm. But uh, so with uh, Amazon, it's 100 US dollars to get the check. And the way US check works um, they have to physically mail it over to Australia. Then I have to take it to the bank and it costs me a $25 fee, which wow. I didn't realize at the time. <laughs> so I lost basically a quarter of my check just so I could deposit it. <laughs> but then there's the, the crazy bit is they have to physically mail it back to the U S which is just ridiculous. So the whole process takes like 30 or 40 days. Wow. Wow. And I assume, yeah, that just, cause, cause you have to wait to be paid out off Amazon affiliate as well. So you're looking at really quite a, like, I mean, if you were to do bad, let's say this month, you won't feel those effects for a, for a few weeks at least. Yeah, it's definitely staggered. But what I've done to kind of, I guess, counter that weird payment system is that uh, you can set what the threshold is. So I can just put the threshold as something high enough such that I only get the check every three months or so. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. because I only get the money every three months or so it's less of a, a big deal if one month you know does worse than the others yeah yeah i mean you've nicely um sort of gone into what i want to talk about which was the um the uh, i guess fragility around the number of views or or, or or i guess the potential for there to be it for it to be quite fragile because um if you don't you know both your sources of income are very uh, driven on, say, views and number of purchases made off affiliate links. Um, how have you counted that? Have you found it to be fairly stable um, over the over the last few years? What What are your experiences on that front? Yeah, so that's one of the main reasons why it took me, I guess, longer than it should have before I started working on the channel full time because it was a bit of an unknown, like. You know, you always hear about people complaining like, oh, the YouTube algorithm, it's destroyed our business and stuff like that. But what I've found is in my own experience, if things start going bad, usually it's it's your fault. Like you need to look at what you're doing. Maybe the content just sucks. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you might be inclined to think everything I'm doing is great because I've put so much time into it. But you need to think about it from the viewer's perspective and what they're watching. 
like at the moment, you know, as mentioned before, I've noticed things going down as I suppose um, COVID issues have eased in some areas. And, you know, I see my stats go down and I don't think, oh no, it's my fault. I'm doing terrible. You know, I think, okay, what's going on in the world? Why is this likely to be happening? Um, how much do I expect it to go down? Is it going to return to where it was before? That's probably the case. So, you know, don't really need to panic. Just just keep on going. Yeah, yeah. Sort of just allow for that seasonality. I mean, business, uh, in that sense, you've got to think of think of it like a business or a business person, right? Um, and not be so sort of, um, I, I know some people who they have a good month and then they spend a lot more money that month and then they have a bad month and they've spent money like they spent the previous month. And you, you, I guess you've just got to be a bit more careful around around that as well um but do you get those stats in terms of your income you you get that monthly or it's, is it fairly easy to check in on how you're doing uh yeah so the youtube stats update like after they're only like a day or two behind so the feed uh, the feedback is pretty real time it doesn't really take long at all i think amazon is yeah a couple of days behind as well so it's it's not too bad yeah yeah that's that's handy um what was I going to go into next? I've completely blanked. Um, oh yeah, no, I got it. Um, talking about products now, how do you how do you get products to review? I assume originally you just it's just stuff that you bought that you reviewed. Yeah, so that's exactly how I started. Basically, just if I had something in my house and it was tech related, I made a video on it, and. I took the approach of understanding that everything that I made, you know, for the first year to maybe even up to three years would just suck. And, you know, I'd look, I knew that I would look back at it later and just cringe at it. And that's the case. But I think it's important to understand that the things you make early on, they might, they're probably just going to suck because the only way to actually get the experience and get better is to, you know, get in there and do it. So I just took whatever I had and just started making videos. Uh, after a few months, um, I did my first laptop video, which was on my uh, laptop that I was issued through my job. So it was a work laptop and because I didn't personally have a, an updated laptop. So I just, I used what I had, even though it was, you know, wasn't mine. I didn't buy that. It was just my company's, but whatever. I did that review and it, it did okay. And that laptop was purchased through a local company here in Australia. So I thought, hey, I'll reach out to them, see if they're interested in sending me something else and you know if so I can do another video and that'd be cool so I sent them an email and then like a week later they got back to me and said oh hey we checked out your video yeah it looks great we're keen to send you send you a laptop and it basically just went from there mm -hmm. um what happened was over time you just build up the uh I, I suppose content library and you know you can reach out to other companies and you say basically the same thing you know, you say, hey, this is what I do. This is an example of my previous work. Uh, would you be interested in sending me products so that I can make some videos on? And most of the times companies have been, you know, receptive to that and they reply and, you know, they're happy to help you and send out stuff. Uh, some companies just don't reply at all. So, you know, just move on. It's the way it is. Um, other companies just started reaching out to me, which happens more and more as you get bigger, which, you know, I kind of expected. Um, so yeah, I think at the start, it's just been a case of, uh, do what you have, try and reach out to people, uh, hope you get lucky. Um, but really eventually you will, if you just keep working at it and then as you get bigger, people will uh, approach you. And, and like you said, anyway, um, even if you don't have the nicest of products, that's personally yours, there's nothing stopping you from, um, borrowing your parents phones or laptops or because it doesn't it doesn't matter right in this instance who owns it um I, i'm fairly sure legally they wouldn't even have a right to not have a video made about their laptop like it's not like it's a personal private thing um so there's sort of nothing stopping you from doing that and let's talk quickly about gear as as an extension of that because um i guess i'm trying to hit on some of the comments or some of the reasons why people can give as to why they can't make a start on YouTube because the next thing is, oh, you know, okay, so you've solved my problem about what I have to review. Now I need, you know, an RX 100 and I don't have $1,500 and I need a nice mic and, and lights. How did you start on that front and what do you use these days? Yeah, so I'm a firm believer of, you know, the gear doesn't make the content, it's your skill level. So 
you could probably start just using like a phone, I think. A lot of those phones have pretty good cameras and pretty good microphones. I mean, they're phones, they're designed so that you can talk mm -hmm. into them. Um, so I think a lot of people already have really what they need. I mean, the quality might not be, you know, super impressive, but I do know a laptop review channel in the US and they do everything on their phone. When I found out, I was just blown away. I mean, I think it's an iPhone, so it's still pretty good camera, but still the fact that when he revealed that, it just kind of shocked me. I was like, oh, wow. Like, I had Who's no that? idea. It just looked so much better. Uh, his channel name is Bob of All Trades. Yeah, right. I, I, for some reason, I thought I thought it would be. He does awesome reviews of, <laughs> uh, like, the Electronics Mag 15, stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, so he's another one that goes too, so. super into depth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's another one who also makes videos, the videos that he wants uh, to see on YouTube. Um, and, yeah, for and, sure. You know, I, I think you guys quite you know match quite closely i mean you, you review the aftershock uh vapor 15 which is what i ended up buying anyway which is why i know oh, nice. <laughs> so much about bob of, bob of all trades um i'm just fangirling a little bit over here so just ign ignore me there about laptops and youtubers um, but yeah sorry let's 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 continue what you were saying about i guess yeah the gear not mattering so much as much as the content yeah so i bought initially a DSLR camera and um, you know I could have gotten something a bit cheaper than that I think it was like maybe a thousand dollars I just started with the kit lens that came with it um, but my plan was you know I want to kind of invest in this because I want to like I plan on going into it for a few years and I, I did so I guess that worked out <laughs> but yeah, definitely don't need to start that big or anything. I still do have that camera, and I did use it for a couple of years before upgrading to something that did 4K. Um, but yeah, there are pretty reasonably priced options these days, even if you did want to get a camera. As for all the rest of the gear, um, I think this usually surprises people to find out, but the lighting and microphone that I got five years ago is still what I use today. So I still use the same just Blue Yeti microphone, which mm -hmm. is like 150 bucks or something. So again, it's not super cheap or anything, but like that's lasted five years and it's generally considered, you know, a entry to mid-range level microphone. Mm -hmm. but that's really all you need. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of DSLR, did you start with a 600D or a 650D or something? Uh, I went with the Canon 70D. 70D. Nice. With like an 18 to 35 or... What are they called? Uh, I can't remember. Whatever the stock lens was, yeah, I eventually right. so oh, yeah, just I did a kit lens. It. Yeah, I started with I started with that, and then the first lens I bought was the um, uh, the Sigma eighteen to thirty five. I think that's what you just mentioned. Right. Yes. Yes. So you never never bought a nifty fifty fifty mil sort of I, cheap lens. Yeah, I did buy one of those cheaper fifty mil ones, but I only used it like a couple of times. I think it was only like forty dollars or something, and it was an older model. It just wasn't great. Like the um, when you put it in autofocus and have the microphone on, you can like yes. physically hear it clicking away. The focus hunting, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you move to a four K camera. So what's that like? A Panasonic GH four or something? Oh, close. I got the GH five. Ah, okay, right. I mean, those are still fairly affordable. I mean, the GH five. I'm not sure how much that sells for, but I think the GH four used to go for about fifteen hundred from memory. Uh, I think the GH5 is around 2000 Australian dollars at the moment, but I think, you know, prices have gone up lately because the US dollar changing with COVID mm -hmm. and all that, so it might be a bit different. But I was able to reuse that um, original lens that I got, so I'm still using the same lens on the, the camera. So I've had that lens for like four years now. Yeah, and right. I'll probably continue to use it because... Unless I drop it, there's no, really, <laughs> there's no real reason to change. Maybe change over. I guess it's an example of when you can just spend a little bit more um, and, and get something that will last much longer and, and just make wise decisions when it comes to what you need and what you don't need. Yeah, so I think, you know, if I was starting out again, I'd probably pick something, I guess, a bit more mid-range, make sure I actually like using it, like making the content, because like you say, you don't want to, buy something and then not use it so i think starting with what you have is a good option and then once once you get a feel for it and you know that you like it investing a bit more money into the tools um so you know you can up that production quality a bit i think is a good move yeah um what do you what are your plans sort of moving forward for the channel we've we've touched on things a little bit but do you have any any bigger plans over the next three to six months 
Uh, not really, just focusing on working on the things that I get sent. So at the moment I've got just a ridiculous queue of like laptops lined up. So just, that's just nonstop work. It's a bit easier because of, uh, there's less events, so less traveling. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate what's happening, but at the same time it does, you know, I don't have to go to like, uh, Computex was supposed to be, I think in June. So I mm -hmm. would have been there for a week. And that's in Taiwan, um, yeah. is that right? Yeah, Taiwan. So you would have so flown just, to Computex? Yeah, I would have gone there um, this year. I went last year for the first time and it, it was awesome. But yeah, that's like a week that just you're gone for pretty much. Mm -hmm. And that happens usually a couple of times a year. Yeah, yeah. So you've been able to sort of save a bit of time there. When, when you fly, do you fly by yourself and create all the, all the content by yourself? Or do you usually try and take someone like your partner or someone else? Uh, yeah, I just go by myself because, well, honestly... I think so I've discussed I've discussed this with my partner before like if we went together I would just spend the whole time working so we wouldn't really get to do yeah. much together anyway so mm -hmm. it might as well just make it a work trip there's sort of no point uh, they just feel sort of neglected and bored versus um, what and you'd yeah. be having a crazy amount of fun and I guess you don't want to it's it's work and, and you can geek out and um, I, I definitely get that you know I, I get that when I go down to the shops and um, I want to look at sort of laptops but no one else around me cares for it but I, I just want to check out you know what's what's the latest so um, but it's it's awesome it sounds like you're just doing something that you really love and you really enjoy um, and it just happens to be a, a way for you to also earn an income and, and pay the bills which is um, really cool did you ever think you'd be doing this like at the start uh definitely not yeah like when i started i just remember thinking oh it'd be cool if i could do like a video a week and if some people watched it then that'd be that'd be nice <laughs> and it's come come a while away since then i mean youtuber anyway is still like a new sort of career right um, um yeah even even five years ago like that would have still been very much early days now now i think people it's starting to get established and people buying ferraris and lamborghinis off <laughs> off their youtube money but um uh, five, even five years ago it was it was much much earlier days than that so um that's awesome it's it's really cool that you've been able to do this and and are you i'm surprised that you haven't had a sort of a single video go go viral because um you're doing like your subscriber numbers are pretty solid i mean you know if if what the population of Canberra is 400,000. So you've got 200,000 subscribers. That's a, that's a pretty big number. And that's, that's um, yeah, pretty, pretty solid. Are, are you, are you surprised that there hasn't been anything gone or any videos gone viral or is it just the nature of the type of content you put out? Do you think? Yeah, it doesn't really surprise me. I think it's like you say, the nature of the content, like a lot of it is designed to be uh, technical in-depth information. And, you know, I just, I don't really see, wide appeal for that although that said i did have my first video pass a million views in the last month which okay. i didn't see coming i just looked at the videos and sorted them from uh, most viewed to least viewed and i saw the one was like nine hundred ninety thousand. i was like oh wow it's it's actually what gonna video hit was that about uh, i was a graphics comparison so just two laptops um 1660 ti compared to 2060 so basically um one level of hardware versus the next level up that that's I think that's a decision that I, I continue to struggle with. <laughs> so I would have probably been half of those views. <laughs> I think that is also what initially um, helped the channel grow. When I got those first review units from the local Australian company, you know, as I said before, like three to four percent of the views are from Australia. So there's not going to be that many people interested in a laptop that's marketed in Australia. So what I did. Um, with that hardware that I had was I would use it for things that people would be interested in. So comparisons in particular, I found to perform quite well. So just comparing like CPUs, graphics, um, just in different games, that type of stuff. And uh, yeah, it seems that that holds true given that was the first uh, video that ever hit a million views on the channel. Yeah. And I must say you've been pretty smart about that as well. I mean, you, uh, I assume you're talking about Metabox um, and yeah. Um, they use chassis from a big manufacturer. I think you've been really smart about making sure that those videos can be discovered because there's like companies like Clever, et cetera, that use the same chassis or, well, 
it's a clever chassis i think but the, there mm-hmm. are other companies that use that chassis so you've i don't know if it was intentional sort of adding those keywords so to speak into into videos that so that people who are looking for the same laptop essentially from other regions of the world discover your videos and i mean the 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 comparisons hold true anyway um so was that a quite an intentional thing uh yeah definitely so a lot of companies around the world do resell the same thing but then what happens is because different companies are selling them they give them different names so when people search for you know product a um that they might not find it because someone else might be listing that as product b so yeah i do try to find out what all the the big companies around the world are calling it and i try and you know say that this is what it is because it is technically the same thing in a lot of cases so i think that that's the best way of uh i guess getting more interest in it more people finding it so if i'm putting the amount of time i am to if i'm putting the amount of time in to test this out i want the most people to see it and in order to do that uh, i think it makes sense to kind of explain uh hey this is the same laptop it's just got a bit of a different name because it's from a different part of the world but you know it's got everything you want so this is the video that you want to watch yeah and it's a good way of sort of getting you know not in a way of bashing a product to death but getting a a diverse range of videos off off a singular purchase or in this case a singular device as well um now the last one before we get into the top 12 um how long does it take for you to shoot edit um do you script videos how long does that whole process take let's say for a for a laptop review it's hard to say because i am pretty much almost always doing multiple at once so i think always i have two going at a time um i try to do three because i find with doing three at once i can uh, split the time up very well because there's basically three main tasks that eat up all the time so one of those would be like testing the battery life you know i just have to leave it there for a day essentially um another one would be testing uh games so i test games out and see how well they perform so that takes about a day to complete uh and then i also do in-depth thermal testing that takes about half a day so you know i'll have all these different things running at the same time and just all these different products will be up to different stages in the test cycle but i guess if i was just spending all my time on one thing i could probably spend you know like maybe three or four 15 hour days and i'd have a pretty good understanding of it but yeah like i say in that time a lot of that a lot of that time would be wasted just you know if the battery is doing a battery test you know i can't do anything so i might as well work on something else Mm -hmm. so i think it makes sense to kind of interleave a lot of different parts and get stuff going at different times which does get a bit confusing when you've got so many things going on so i just try to keep a bunch of detailed notes of uh where i'm at mm-hmm. and then you so you collect all that information and then you and then next step is scripting after you when you can sort of look, look at all the information you've collected or uh, so what i initially do is so i unbox the machine and i try to do like 90 percent of the filming because as soon as i touch it it's just going to be covered in uh-huh. fingerprints and you want it to look nice so i do a bunch of the filming initially and then i'll do the testing and then there's a lot of data entry involved so i've got to put stuff into excel um i do have a lot of like graphs and stuff already pre-made so I don't have to reinvent the wheel each time just got to put the data in and see how it compares with others and then yeah i script the the video and that's that's pretty easy these days because basically what I do is I've just got a template for the different videos that I make mm-hmm. because again I don't think there's any point reinventing the wheel like is there any point going into this laptop review and changing the structure every time because I feel like that's just more work if I've got something that people can understand and I think flows well I think it makes sense just to you know use that template and then just change the uh the different parts which are specific to the machine that i'm looking at yeah plus i guess people can then just they just know where to expect what sort of information you know whether thermals are last or build quality is first what whatever it may be so you've sort of optimized things down a little bit so that you're not you're you're being intelligent with that so that your your use of time etc sort of intelligent as well um awesome good stuff um where can people find out more about you yeah, just on YouTube, search for Jared's Tech or Jared's Laptops should come up there. And a whole bunch of videos. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you ready for the top 12? 
Uh, yeah. I think so. <laughs> I sprung this on you last last minute as always. Um, <laughs> but let's see how you go. So um, any any books, top three books uh, or podcasts that you recommend? So I don't listen to many podcasts myself. I, as mentioned, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, although I feel like there's a lot of overlap these days because, you know, you can just listen to the audio. You don't necessarily need to watch the video. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, probably... I watch a lot of uh, Gary Vee videos. So, mm-hmm. yeah, he does a lot of like interviews with like business people, and I guess he technically does have a podcast. But yeah, I find I find that content pretty interesting. That's just one though. So, uh, I guess I listen to a lot of uh, tech ones as well. I guess the most popular one that people would be familiar with is Linus Tech Tips, as discussed mm-hmm. earlier. Um, they do the WAN show every week, which is basically just like Love news coverage show. on a saturday afternoon so, just chuck that on <laughs> yeah so i've i've probably listened to every episode of that since for like the last well, how long would it be it's a while it's before i started the channel so mm-hmm. yeah probably been listening to that for like six or seven years um yeah that's probably probably the main ones yeah awesome um top three software tools that you can't live without what do you use day in day out uh does spotify count i need that music yeah yeah <laughs> of course spotify uh, anything else you use uh it's it's funny because i only really started using it like in the last few months i used to just i used to just like either listen to music on youtube or i'd have mm. the files locally but oh man spotify just takes it to a new level it suggested <laughs> me so many new songs i never would have found it's, it's great it's awesome <laughs> um i hate saying this but i feel like i couldn't live without excel because uh, it's double-edged sword, but yeah, that that gets all my graphs done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, otherwise, oh, keep it simple, and I'll go with Notepad. I just yeah. that's what I use to take all my notes. It's a bit of a mess, and I could yeah, probably wow. find something better. But yeah, I just dump everything in a text file. <laughs> I mean, you just need Google Keep or Google Docs and Google Sheets. I don't know if you're a Google guy. We run on G Suite over here and I am just, I mean, my Google Keep is a mess, but um, you, if, you, if you ever think about, you know, swapping to the Google Google side of the world, um, that's the way I would say. I do actually use Google Docs for all the scripting, but yeah, for notes, okay. just, just Notepad. But yeah, Google Docs is awesome because when I travel, a lot of times, like if someone asks me a question, they're like, oh, what did you think about this particular thing on this video from like two years ago? I can just look at the script and see exactly what I would have said. So yeah. it does save a lot of time. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, are there any mantras you try and live by or sort of sayings that you just try and follow? Uh, I think the one that comes to mind is probably no sacrifice, no victory. Love it. That's very... Uh like viking raiders of you <laughs> i do listen to a lot of viking metal so <laughs> there you go i didn't know that that was a thing <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it is it's good top three people you follow or study and why gary v one of them yeah he's definitely got some good advice um linus sebastian oh i don't want to say that because <laughs> i don't know like i do watch a lot of their content and they they are, i don't know there's a lot of a lot of tech guys out there i could easily i could easily pick so I feel like that might be a bit, bit of a cop out. <laughs> <laughs> Any anyone else sort of out of the text text sphere then? Uh, yeah, I'll go with uh, Peter McKinnon. So I watch a lot of like photography and videography stuff because I'm always looking to improve um, like how I make my videos. And yeah, he makes a lot of videos and has a lot of good tips for video creation. So I find those very useful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, well, any any parting words before we wrap this? episode up uh yeah if anyone is like interested in finding out more about creating a youtube channel like i'm definitely happy to answer any questions like on twitter or email whatever awesome thanks where can we find you on twitter by the way what's your handle oh yeah it's just jared's tech on twitter as well so same username pretty much on every platform love it love it awesome thanks for your time jared yeah thanks for having me